I've been a teaching assistant for econometrics classes uh, using our software for over a year now. Um, and, uh, you know, in order to do the basic statistics and the basic econometrics, um, you need to get pretty co get comfortable with our software um, pretty quick. Uh, in my experience with students, this is often kind of the first kind of like basic programming software that they've used. And so they sometimes have a lot of uh, hard time struggling with the software, just getting kind of used to it and getting comfortable with it. Uh, usually the thing that takes them the longest amount of time, sometimes hours, is just loading data into R and making sure it looks right. Um, so my goal with this video is to turn what might be, you know, like a long time, um, a struggling time with the internet for you into uh, a 10 minute kind of simple exercise where you get R started, you get a little bit of data up and running, you have a look at it, you know what you're doing, and you're ready to do your econometrics after that. So in this video, what we're just going to do is um, I'm going to help you get started with R. We're going to load data a couple different ways. Uh, we're going to kind of have a look at the data. I'm going to help you kind of interpret what they call functions in R, the built-in functions. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the packages that uh, R um, has that you could add on to R. So I'm going to assume that you just installed R or you installed R before. I just installed the latest version a little while ago, so 2.15.0. I have a feeling everything I'm going to tell you is going to be applicable to all the later versions, you know, 3, 4, 5, because it's all pretty simple. So when you start R, the first thing that opens up is this little window. You have an R console, uh, and then these little buttons up here. Uh, you could use the R console to do all your little commands, and it does it all there. So 2 plus 4 is 6, that sort of thing. Um, but a good way to keep everything organized is the first thing you do is you start it up and you do a new script that opens up this little editor window and then let's kind of tile things vertically so we could keep everything nice and organized. So you got the console on this side and you got the editor on this side. So we're going to type in things over here and then we're going to see the effect of those things over in the console. And uh, as an example of that, let me just start with inputting a simple vector. So let's call this thing called vector, and it's going to be equal to, so this sign is saying that we're creating a variable called VEC, and it's equal to, this less than and minus sign equal, essentially means equal to, I think, I think it's synonymous. Um, so what's a vector? Let's just do something really simple like that. So I'm selecting it, I'm pressing this button that says run line or selection, and then you can see it appear over here in the R console, exact same thing. And so now there's a variable out there called vec. So now sitting in R, there's a little variable called vec, and you could do all sorts of um, functions on vec. Let's find the mean. The mean is 4. You could find the variance. Variance of 4.66. You could find the standard deviation. And it's, so you have your editor over here where you put in the commands and then you have the output over here. You'll notice that sometimes I selected things and sometimes I just left the little cursor on the line. If you select uh, um, everything you select, when you press this button um, that says, I think, run selected lines, uh, it's going to run all of these lines. So you can see it created the vector, recreated the vector, found the mean. However, if you just let the cursor sit there and then run it, it's only going to run that single line. So this is a nice handy way where you could run everything, or you could only run single things. Um, and so wh what did we do? We created a vector, uh, and we defined in R this thing called an object or a variable called vec. So there's this thing sitting there now, and you could do any sort of manipulation to it. Uh, let's switch over to loading a CSV. More than likely, you're going to be given some sort of file that's in Excel uh, or, you know, like a spreadsheet type thing, and you're going to be told to upload it to R and kind of get started doing manipulations to it. So I have a uh, CSV file prepared for y'all. This is NHIS data. I think this is actually uh, what's freely available on the internet. It's the National Health Institute survey um, health data. So it's kind of like biometric data of all these individuals throughout the US. It's kind of a boilerplate 
you know, little data set used in a lot of econometric textbook. I think I saw it in Woodridge. Um, so if I were to open it, it's right now a text file, and here's the header. Here are all the observations. So this is one human, this is another person, this is another person, and here's kind of some of their biometric data. You notice all of the observations are separated by commas. If you were to open this up in Excel, which I think I already did. Yeah, I already actually opened this in Excel. Uh, you can see here is the data. So here's the header. Um, the titles of all the columns. So these are like kind of uh, identifiers. So I think this is household, this is a family, this is a person. Then you have sex, so for gender, one and two, body mass index, sleep, education, height, weight, all that sort of thing. It's a database. There's 4,785 observations plus the line of the header. So how do we get that into R? The, I'm going to show you the quick and easy way. Take the file, drag and drop it into the R console. So now in the R console, we have this whole thing right here. And this is the file path. So this is where on my computer I put the CSV file. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create an object called NHIS. The name is arbit arbitrary. You could call it anything. Um, you could call it data. You could call it my data. You could call it anything. So I'm going to call it NHIS. Uh, oh yeah, this data I'm putting in the the, um, the video's description, so you could grab it and work with it as well. So we're going to do read.csv, so we're reading a comma-separated variable file. Uh, you'll notice when we opened up that notepad, all these variables were separated by commas, so clever, appropriate file name. Then parentheses, now we're going to put in the file path which was that thing I dragged and dropped into. So this is where the, pro the file is, comma, uh, and then header equals true, uh, or just capital T. So, sorry, it's a big line here. Now let's run it. Hopefully there's no error. Yeah, so because there was no error, it ran perfectly. So when I do NHIS, it shows the whole data, and everything looks halfway good to me. In fact, there's so much data, it kind of cleared this whole thing. Uh, if you want to clear the console so that you don't see anything anymore, and it's completely empty, you could do Control L, which I just did. Control and L, it cleared everything. Control L, right. Uh, a lot of issues are, let's say, people forget to put in a comma there. What's the error that's going to happen? Unexpected symbol. I for simply forgot to put in a comma. And now it loads it just fine. So now inside R, we've inputted the data in HIS. So I just showed you the drag and drop method um, where I took the file, picked it up, dragged it in the console, and that's how I found the file path. Uh, but sometimes it's just handy and clean to set up a working directory. So the first thing is um, make sure you've selected the R console, so it's highlighted here, and then go to File, Change Directory. So we're going to designate a working directory, and I think the file I put it in is down here. Yeah, Intro to R. So I selected the file that it's in, so Intro to R Video. You can see that's the folder I'm in, Intro to R Video. There's NHAIS data. So I could run this same line, but I've set up this whole thing right here as the working directory. So now I could just delete that, and I have a much simpler command. Bam, so you see it loaded it just fine. Had I not set up that work direct working directory, what would have happened? Let's just pick something else randomly. So if I were to run this with the incorrect working directory, what's going to happen? I have, there's going to be some sort of error, and the error is error in file, file RT cannot be open with this connection, blah, 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 blah. So either set up the working directory and then do the short thing, or do this drag and drop method and don't really worry about the uh, working directory in the first place. Okay, so now how did we know we loaded the data correctly at all? So what we could do in R are these three simple commands. So there's structure, str, 
there's summary, summary, uh, and then there's fix. So uh, when you do str and then inside the parentheses nhis, that's what I've named it. You might have called it again data or my data or something like that nhis. When we do this command, it's going to give us a sense of the structure of the R object. So there's this R object now that we created uh, that exists in R, NHIS. Uh, it's a data frame. It has 4,785 observations. As you remember from the Excel spreadsheet, there were 4,785 plus the header uh, with nine variables. And then here, list here the variables. So here's the household indicator, family indicator, person indicator, sex, BMI, sleep, Etc. So it gives you a nice little sense of it. Uh, it tells you if things are filled with integers. So integer, 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 number. So this is a floating point. You notice the decimal, uh, and then more integers. Uh, you could also do summary and HIS, and it gives you a simple summary of all the variables. So uh, you know. So let's look at sex. I think one is male, two is female. It might be the other way around. You can see the mean is 1.5, which would suggest if if two is a signifier for male, then there's a bit more males in this survey. Uh, same thing for BMI. The mean is 31, which is, I think, overweight. Oh, there's an error. OK, there's missing data. Um, uh, just gives you a sense of what the data looks like. You could also do this command fix. Um, let's say if you want to edit things one by one, you run fix, and it opens up this little window inside R. So this is the R object in HIS. You can see here are all the headers. Here's observation one all the way down to observation 4,785. I think it maxes out at 5,000 or 10,000, so you wouldn't be able to see the rest if you had a very large data set. Um, and then inside here, you could change things. So I could take this sleep variable, which is seven, and do an A, or I could make it eight or nine or something. Um, but we're going to learn some ways in other videos where you could change things en masse when needed. So for example, you can see this guy right here, observation 6, has BMI of 100, sleep of 98 hours a night, uh, height of 98 inches, which is really tall, and they weigh 1,000 pounds. So obviously this is like a, a, an observation that we need to remove, and I'll show you how to do that later on. Um, but this, these three things, in fact, all you probably needed was structure, tells you that we loaded the data correctly, uh, and you can now kind of get started with the next steps of your statistics and your condiment. Okay, so interpreting functions. Uh, just as an example, um, you know, we did the re.csv uh, function command up here. Uh, but what exactly does that mean? Like, uh, you know, I told you how this works, but how would you know how this works? How would you know what to put in here and then comma what to put in there? How would you know about structure, summary, fix, or any of the other kind of, I think by now, tens of thousands of functions and commands and little options that you had with R? Uh, so I'll just kind of walk you through if, let's say you knew read.csv and you wanted to work with it, how would you make use of it? So two options here. Uh, these two things are synonymous. So read.csv uh, or help read.csv. So I run this little guy here, question mark. It's going to tell me about this thing. So that was wrong. Cool, so read table. So the read.csv command is this right here. Uh, usually all the stuff after it are the default. So the first line says file, so that's where you put the file path. The default was header equals true, so I actually didn't even need to include that because the default is true. Sep equals uh, comma, be tab or space or any number of things. So again, it's a comma separated variable, so the default is that these things are separated by a variable. Uh, a few other defaults. Um, by file, what do we mean by file? You have all this description that, that tells you what the file is. Uh, a lot of these things were written maybe 10 to 15 years ago by these programmers in the 90s who originally created R, so they're sometimes poorly written by the standards of someone who's completely new to this, but at least it gives you a, a decent good sense um, of how things work, and then from here you can kind of search through Google to get a better sense of how things should work. And then usually at the very bottom of these descriptions are a few examples so that you could kind of get it, you know, it's nice to give an example and then you tweak the example to get it up and running yourself. So here's an example of, of a read.csv, um, yeah. And then lastly, installing packages. Uh, a lot of times you'll search around the internet for how to do something. You'll see a little command, so something like 
uh, read.csv or you know like a ggplot2 or some sort of command you'll try to do it yourself and then you'll get an error message i'll do another i think i don't have enough time so i'll do another installing packages video but how do you if you want to install a package or a library how would you go about doing that well you come up to here um you select a crayon mirror so i'm in california uh, so I'm going to choose CA1 because that's Berkeley, I think. But you'll choose something that's the closest to you. Uh, they all should work for you, but for example, for fun, I chose um, like Singapore once just to see how quick it was. Uh, and it was really, really, really slow because it was obviously going to the server physically in Singapore and sending it all back. So just choose the one that's nearest to you. Once you've selected your mirror, like the little CRAN depository of all these packages, you then do install package. And yeah, here it is. So here are all of not these are not even all of the packages. These are the most popular, most common packages. Um, so like ggplot2 is located. I don't know where it is. Okay, somewhere in here. You would then select the one you want. So let's just do grandpa. Uh, it's it's gonna then load it up, install it, and now you could then use the functions associated with that. You might actually have to type this thing over here. Library library and then the function you want to get started. Or should, I'll do another video, but that's how you get new packages up and running. Uh, thanks. Bye.